Hello and welcome to another edition of Attract Well Office Hours. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Attract Well, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, hey, everyone. We're glad you're here today. We are glad you're here today. We're very excited to share some exciting updates with you. Greg's going to be doing that here in just a bit. And uh, we're also going to be spending some time going through how to make pages on your Attract Well site look great on mobile. So uh, as you're coming in, let us know what you do. What kind of business are you in? Who do you help? Uh, how do you help them? We love to learn more about you here on these live calls. Uh, these are calls that we offer every single week for free to anyone who'd like to join them. They're at two o'clock Eastern every Thursday. If you would like to get on the list to be notified of our topics and get the replays, you can go to attractwell.com slash office hours. You also have the option as one person has chosen to do today to schedule dedicated time to work together on a call like this one. If you would like to do that, you can go to attractwell.com slash work review. And then of course, finally, if you are in the process of working things out, maybe you're migrating over to attract wealth from 17 other services, because you can get rid of that many when you work with us, uh, you might want a hand with what you're doing, or maybe you've got a vision for what you want, but you don't really feel quite as gifted in the realm of design and execution of tech. In that case, we have an incredibly qualified team that can help you with your projects. And you can go to attractwell.com slash concierge to meet them and get a quote for whatever it is that you would like help with or what you are working on. So what's up? We are, uh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia today. And Greg is in Fargo. Are you snowy up there, Greg? <laughs> when are we not? We just did some more this morning. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh, it's like 10 inches over the weekend and now a little dusting today. And yeah, yeah. We, uh, here spring is around the corner. Um, we'll, we'll find out soon. <laughs> I got to Atlanta and there are flowers on the trees. And I was nice. like, what is this? Because <laughs> it's still gray and black in New York. Um, I mean, everything is gray and black in New York, including our wardrobes. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we're thrilled to have you here. Hello, Houston. Hello, Illinois. Palm Bay. What's up, you guys? So excited to have you here. Uh, we are thrilled to be here with you today. So what I would like to do first to kick things off is to kit hand this over to Greg. We have five exciting uh, new feature updates to share with you that are going to impact lots of different ways that you use attract well and the user experience that you create for your clients and customers so uh greg why don't you take it away i think you are co-host you should be able to take the share and get going sounds good thanks ashley let me get yeah get sharing here so yeah five awesome update um as of today well i think they happened sometime in the last week or so anyway <clears throat> so one of the um i'll start with the first one here we've got one uh there's an improvement around campaigns if you recall recently we had uh, we had announced the video hosting and there were the there was the concept of collections well now this collections idea has come to campaigns so if you have a lot of campaigns you can organize them into folders uh essentially this is what a collection is and i, I just have a demo account here and uh, you can either do that by adding a collection um, you can filter by them here but let me i'll just go in here and make a new one so i'm just going to make a new collection called my new collection you can just type it in hit enter uh, and then change collection it'll create the collection for you and then update it and now as you can see in the drop down list there's now this my new collection here which will then only show that one and if you need to you can rename and delete it but a great way to keep the campaigns organized if you have um, you know a lot of specific campaign or a lot of campaigns around given topics um, kind of on a broader note there, um, if you're looking to organize more resources than just campaigns, uh, we do have the resource bundle feature. Um, this is not a new update. This has been around for quite some time. But you can create a resource bundle that actually has multiple assets in there. You know, for example, the um, if you have the a campaign and a landing page and um, you know all sorts of things, you can you can put into a, a resource bundle there. So um, so anyway. So this is a really nice and welcome addition. We've had that on our wish list for years uh, to be able to filter like that. Uh, the next one we have here is uh, the ability to change a thumbnail on uh, the thumbnail on videos. So this one just barely made missed the cut when we were talking about um, videos the other day. And um, this one, there's basically you know when you're editing your videos, you have the video list here. Um, there's the change thumbnail feature. Uh, just click on the link. And it'll ask you, you know, do you want to use the default thumbnail, which is the auto-generated um, animated one, or you can use a custom thumbnail. If you choose that, it'll uh, pop up your video library. If you pick a still image, it will make a still image for your thumbnail. 
Uh, if you pick an animated image, like if you upload a GIF here, then it will use that instead of it will animate it. So uh, that's something you can uh, play around with. If you want to customize it a little bit, it's great for, uh, for example, if you have a, uh, you know, your video, like it maybe doesn't come up with the right image or picks the frame where you got a funny face or <laughs> whatever. That, that often happens, I've noticed, when it comes to the still. So um, we can customize that and maybe, you know, provide a more customized branding look and feel on top of everything there. So. That's a, another nice little change. Uh, there's a couple of other changes here that are um, involving online classes. Actually, I think three of them specifically. So there are um, number one, um, it's it's a little optimization, makes it a little bit easier to edit your content uh, when you have multiple lessons in a class, a lot of lessons in a class. Now this class only has I think six lessons or something, but we do have people that have, you know, a hundred lessons in a class and they have them organized into, we call them, uh, what do we call it? I guess it's in the lesson, but anyway, they're categories. So like this contents would be a category. Uh, and, you know, there might be another one that has, you know, you might have 10 contents. They may, may be like chapters or modules. And then within each module you have, uh, you know, beginning, middle, end, whatever, you can have diff different categories. So the change here is that, you have um, when you're editing the lesson. Um, actually, you, know, uh, you can put a category and a subcategory, and uh, this allows you to, you know, I'll, I actually. So this one doesn't have any categories. But anyway, so I'll I'll add a category here uh, on the first one. I'll just show you how this all works. Hey, look at me and you. Um, <laughs> we'll set a category of uh, you know course contents, and then I won't put a subcategory on the first lesson. But I could if I wanted to, um, but I'm going to go on maybe like the third lesson here and uh, I'll put like, I don't know, advanced or something, advanced strategies. Um, <clears throat> and then um, I can put my uh, course contents in there again if I wanted to do save changes here and come on over here. And, you know, I want to probably work on this a little bit more, but actually, okay, this worked out perfectly well. So we have uh, course contents you can see is the the category, and then now we have the subcategory in here as well. So this allows you to um, break it down further. You know, the people were coming to us with these large um, classes, and they're like, well, this is, you know, it would be great if we could break them down a little bit farther. This is a great way to do that with the subcategory. And also for those people that have lots of uh, lessons in your class, currently to reorder your lesson, um, well, what was happening before this next change I'm going to talk about here is you would add a lesson to a class and it would go, I can't remember if it went to the beginning or the end, but you ended up having to drag and drop it. And if you've got, I need to reorder the lesson. And if you've got 95 lessons in there, moving it from number two to number 95, it's a little bit of fidgety work, you know, cause you can just drag it here, which is great if you just want to swap the order of a couple lessons. But if you've got a hundred to do, then that's a little more challenging. So now whenever you're, both when you're adding a lesson, you can add a lesson specifically to a given spot as well as, um, anyway, yeah, so, you know, it's being a little wonky here today, but the you can add it to a given spot or um, or there's, here we go, um, you can set the position of the lesson in your class by choosing the lesson that you want it to be in. So if I want to take this one and move it to the end, I can just pick the last and then save and it'll jump automatically there. And I mean, this is even a type in field. So if you have a very large lesson, you know, you can just type the name of it and pick it and then save and it'll jump right to the end. So that uh, that's a great addition, I think, uh, for people who have a lot of content. And now finally, we have another really awesome class addition that I'll talk about. And this is more for people who are live launching classes um, or you have it, it stated another way, you have a class that you want everybody in the vault to walk through at the same pace that, you know, unlock a lesson on a given day, like on, March 20th, we want lesson two to open up. On March 25th, we want lesson three to open up. Previously, it wasn't really easy to do that. I mean, it was possible, but it was a lot of work. You had to like take everyone out of the vault and add them back in and do some juggling to make that happen. Well, now there's a new setting here when you're editing the online class to say students advance to the next lesson on a specific calendar date. I mean, this is in addition to these three that have already been here um, and are probably these you know, the first couple are probably the most common, but now you can pick a specific calendar date. And you can see now that this is set to always available. And I'm, I'll just go in here and save this one um, quick and then come over here and I'll pop into lesson number two. 
And if I scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to see that there's a date when the lesson becomes available. So I'll just pick a day here, March 23rd, save. And you'll see that it shows up in the list um, and it shows on each lesson like when it's going to be available. And of course, if you want to have them unlock, you probably want to come into your course and set specific dates on those instead of having them sort of a random lesson in the middle with a date on it. But um, I'll go over here and refresh and show you how that looks. So now this lesson has a little unlocks on March 23rd. So now everybody in your vault who has access to this class, it'll unlock on that given day. You can set up these live launch courses without having to do all the gymnastics you had to do before to make that work. Um, this is this has been yeah this has been on our wish list since I think it was 2019. I found it was uh, buried back there. So I'm happy to mark this one off the list and uh, you know hopefully make your life a little bit easier in terms of setup there. So very cool. I think that was I think that was it. Yeah, I am particularly thrilled about that last one. Uh, the trick that I had been using for years with this was to require instructor approval for people to, to advance. And then I would just have the automated email go out and say, great job on your progress. Come back later. <laughs> but now um, now that can actually just be set up from the get-go. I guess it's time to update the How to Build Your Online Course course because there's an entirely new way to go about doing this and it's so much easier. So thank you, Greg, for these updates. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Greg built this whole thing, and uh, I'm here to help you make sense of it and put it to use in your business. So let's get into that. Um, I do have uh, today, Nikki, I saw you're signed up for a work review. Very excited about that. We are going to be getting into that here at the close of the call. Um, let us know in the chat. What are you excited to uh, start using differently on your site? Um, we were hoping to have the thumbnail, I think, done before last week's training uh, where we talked about our, our new uh, video hosting feature, but that is huge. I mean, I feel like that's just like, necessary. So i um, very excited about that one as well. So awesome. Uh, there's a quick question here I want to answer before we get into today's topic of going mobile responsive. Uh, but anonymous here, is there a way to create contracts in Attract Well that we can share with our clients to sign? We actually do have content on our sort of different ways of doing this uh, in Attract Well that's going to be on our YouTube channel. Um, there's, it's not a direct way where they sign in the system, uh, but there are a number of different ways that you can go about doing this. Um, and, and I definitely, let me, we should probably just grab that, uh, link and, um, and get that to you. Greg, are you able to pull that up and, and share that? Um, I don't maybe, maybe remember which one it is, but I was going <laughs> to mention something. I don't know if you want to take it, if you got yeah, a, a yeah. second to look for it, I can, I can talk about a potential Please other do. way here. So yes, depending on like, um, what you need with the contracts and, you know, if you need an actual signature versus, you know, I know laws probably vary and I'm not a lawyer and all that good stuff, but, um, there, the forms feature in attract well combined with the page builder can allow you to create, essentially you could put a contract on a page, just copy and paste your whole contract into the page builder and then um, put a form on the bottom that says, you know, I agree, or, you know, put in today's date, put, you know, type your name in lieu of an actual signature, check a box that says, I agree. Uh, you can create that sort of thing. So yes, you can, um, if you have like a PDF document that you need, you know, initialed in certain spots and whatever, um, that is something that we don't have. That's more of the traditional e-signing service. That's something we don't have at the moment. Um, but you can definitely make one with the page builder if that is good for whatever that you're doing. So um, looks like you found the link. Yes. Yeah. So there, like Greg mentioned, there are a few different ways. And that is something uh, that we do cover in pretty, pretty real depth there in that training. So um, it is on our wish list to have, you know, the signing in system and everything. But there are lots of cool ways uh, that you can also accomplish that. Just kind of depends on what your um, specific needs are for the... Um, the dotted line, as it were. So, uh, what we're going to do today? Don't have um, I don't have slides because this is really all show and tell. We're going to get into this together today. Uh, and so, what I am going to do here is uh, let me actually real quick. I actually created a page uh, that Greg mentioned. Uh, hey, we should maybe make this into a template, and I'm going to actually use it as an example today. <laughs> Uh, so let me actually claim this resource and paste it into the Jane account. I'm not, not going to be able to give it to you guys today because it is um, something that we're using for one of our very specific purposes. However, uh, it is something that I think will be um, very useful for you guys to see as an example. So um, let me get into the dummy account here and we can get started. 
Okay, here we are. All right, so I'm going to log in here. And if you guys ever get a resource bundle, uh, you claim it really simply by going over here and just checking this box and claiming the bundle. And now you have the actual page. So I want to show you a couple of things, you guys. So first things first, um, we're using the page editor in Attractwell. And what we're trying to do is make a page that looks really great on mobile. Now, generally speaking, if you are on desktop, it's really easy to design something and have it look good on the page that you are designing it for, right? Because desktop or laptop, right? Uh, it's nice and wide. If you design it wide, then it's going to appear just as you've designed it. Uh, but if you are designing for mobile, and maybe you're not on mobile when you're doing the designing, then it can be a little tricky, right? So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually showing you a sales page that promotes a track well inside of a certain uh, vertical to a group. Uh, and so we are positioning all of these features, just like you would on a sales page for something that you do. And of course, here we have uh, these sections. But what I want to show you what this looks like. So you're, you're seeing the published version of the page on a, on a laptop device, right? Well, that is not what this looks like when we get into the actual published page. So the way that we go about creating better mobile view uh, is, is first by creating the design that you want, right? Including the things that you want. If you want it to show up on desktop, I usually design for desktop first and then create the mobile version. So this is ultimately what I did first. Uh, and so in this particular case, I liked how this looked, right? Uh, and you can actually use this. There's a preview right here. Oops, right up here at the top. There is a, a desktop or a laptop preview. There's a tablet preview and a phone preview. And when you click any of these, you can actually get a feel for what this uh, for, for what your design is going to look like on mobile, right? So you can actually see here that this fits quite well. But let me show you if I were to remove the tablet view from those and have this um, this section. Oh, oops, I didn't do that right, did I? Let me just refresh this page because I totally just did something wrong and I don't want to mess myself up. I want to leave the page. Okay, so what you're able to do is toggle between and allow different uh, viewing options in these different sections. So what you can see here is I have two sections for this guy, right? Or two sections for this top one. And if we zoom in here, you can see that this very top section I have set up to be viewable on the wider, the desktop and laptop devices. Whereas the second one is viewable only on mobile and tablet. And so the reason why I do that is if we actually take these and kind of swap them out a little bit. I'll make this viewable on all. And we go look at the phone preview. This text is monstrously big, right? I don't want text that big. And I kind of don't really like how it looks on this wider tablet view either. It's a little better, but it's not ideal. And so what I've done then is I have removed this as from being viewable, this larger text one. I've removed it from the smaller device view. I've created a copy of it, which all you have to do is just click this little duplicate section here. And then I'm just going to select my text. And in this case, I am going to select it all there. And then I'm just going to shrink it down. I think I took it down to maybe like 28 or 25 or something like that, right? So it's something to that effect. And then of course, you would want to not make that visible on the larger devices and make it visible on the smaller ones, right? So that's essentially what you would do for a section like that. So now you can actually see if we have this one show up and you do want to make sure that whatever you're blocking it from, the other one is showing it on and vice versa. So that way everyone is getting the same experience, getting the same content. It's just optimized for whatever the, the device is that they're on. So let's look at this real quick. Now you can see that this top call out section, it's nicer, right? The text isn't quite as large. Now, the other thing that I did here, and let's go ahead and make this one viewable on mobile as well. This section, I really love on the desktop view, right? Because it shows up just, it's it's got this nice little animation. It The, the text sits over the, the lightened area really nicely. 
Um, this is a background image that I made in Canva. It was simply uh, an image that I put a white gradient over in Canva and just attached that to the background of this section. And so on desktop, it looks great, right? On um, tablet, it looks, it looks okay as well. It's okay here. Um, you do kind of have a little bit of an issue with uh, maybe as you're scrolling over some parts of it, being able to see uh, the text really clearly. And then when you're on mobile, it's a hot mess. So let's look at that, right? It's just, this just does not, that's not okay, right? We can agree that's, that, that doesn't look good. So again, what I've done here is I have removed this from mobile view because it doesn't look nice. And I think I'm gonna remove it from tablet view as well. Cause I was kind of, I didn't really love it so much on tablet. Now, all I did here was I duplicated just like I showed you before. And, and what I did was, do you see this section back here? So notice that there is no block. So this, this yellow where you see me highlighting, there's nothing there when you hover, like where it's hovering over the background, but here there is a background, right? So all I did here was I, hovered over to select the, the area that I wanted, clicked it, or actually, sorry, you need to be in the element style editor here. Click what you want to edit. And then what I did was I took this, which was over here, this background op opacity, and slid it over, right? So you see how it becomes more and more solid white. Look over there to the left, right? So I'm adding some opacity here and blurring the background some, right? So that way the white helps to make the font pop off the screen. So it's actually legible when we're in a smaller view and we're hovering over the details of that image. So now what this looks like when we view it on mobile, is we have, you know, a slight, um, we have an opacity here behind it, right? And it's blurred as well. So now you can really, there you can tell there's an image that we're hovering over. It looks vaguely like a desktop with stuff on it. It's not a big deal, but obviously the copy is the thing that matters the most. And it just looks nicer, right? So if we switch over here, it also looks a little better on tablet too, right? So that is really the gist. If you are creating something that's going to be on both mobile and desktop, sometimes you're just gonna wanna make a copy of a section and then tweak that section and just kind of keep opening up your preview and double checking what it looks like to make sure that it looks the way that it needs to. Now, another thing, and this is sort of a preference of mine that I want to kind of get into here. Um, I don't personally love to use this, um, and I'll actually show you this section with uh, its two columns with a photo on the left and text on the right. Same for this one where you've got photo and then text on mobile, generally speaking, where the copy is most important, which is in the majority of cases, I don't want to see the photo first, right? Unless that photo is, a, you know, an image that has text on it that's explaining something or a screenshot of something or something demonstrative, I don't want the visitor to see the photo first, right? Because that's not the most important part of what's in this section, right? Becca's story in this case, in the context of this page is more important than the photo of her. And so you can actually see that I have taken and removed this one from viewing in mobile. And then I've created another section and all I did was I swapped columns here. So I'll show you exactly what I did. So I made a duplicate of that, right? So we have two of them now. I'm going to make it not viewable on anything but mobile. I'm gonna go up here to this column editor, click this guy here. And we're just going to use one of these move column to the left or right to swap. Oops. Right. So now when we're viewing on mobile, we're going to see the story first followed by the image. Right. So and let me just show you the difference between these two, because uh, the content and the design of these sections are identical. Right. It's just that we've swapped. Uh, the order of, of what's viewable. So let's look at them um, back to back in a mobile preview so you can see the difference here. So when I scroll down here, what our customers are saying, um, there we go. So it's gonna show her face first, which is fine, but I personally think 
that seeing this first, right? So having what our customers are saying and then seeing what they're saying and then getting the image, in my personal opinion, I like that a little better. I also like it where we have sections uh, that spell things out. Um, I'll, I'll show you here in just a moment uh, what I mean by that because it is something that I use throughout this page. Okay, so we'll go back to the, our content editing here, which is our default. So these are going to show up nicely on mobile. Just any of our photo sections that you use are really mobile optimized already and you don't have to worry too much about them. Sometimes what you may need to do though is maybe just hit enter once after an image um, so that they, um, so it doesn't show up really tightly stacked on top of each other. And it also, it's also true in this particular instance, right? So if this were viewable on mobile, let me show you real quick. If you ever get this, um, as, as a, an issue here, let me come down here. So do you see how there's like barely any space between where the text starts and her image is here? What I like to do here and I know this isn't like perfect coding, but it's really simple to do. Do you see how I put the cursor just to the right of the photo? Hit enter once or twice. Voila. And then you just open it up and it does look nicer there when we get into mobile. My computer is very slow today. There we go. So you see how that space is there. It just looks nicer. But um, I digress. That's not one that we're using on mobile. Okay, so um, when we go down here, what I've designed this page to look like is sort of an alternating uh, set of text on the left, photo on the right, text, uh, you know, and, and vice versa. But you will see, and actually, let me show you the published page. So you can actually see that, here we go, photos here, photos here, right? And we alternate back and forth all the way down the page. I think that this looks really nice and provides visual interest. Uh, when you are scrolling down on a wider device. But on mobile, don't love the look because what's going to happen is, is they're gonna see the text, then they're gonna see this photo, then they're gonna see this photo, then they're gonna see this text. It just doesn't look that great in my personal opinion. When we're designing for mobile, I think that it's better to have um, the sections be uniform, right? So, and again, my personal preference is text first, image second. And so this section, that means that this section, I could show this on all devices, right? Because what they're gonna see first, and let's go into the preview and I'll show you, what they're gonna see first is what I want them to read, right? And then it's going to, um, th then a supporting image is going to show up uh, after that. There's our animations, here we go. So they're gonna see this, stay organized and get better results for your clients. They're gonna see the cool picture drop in, and then I want them to read the next title, right? not see another image and then get the title. So how do we achieve that? Well, the way that we do that is very similar to what I showed you up at the top. And what I've done here is I have a section that is again, repeating the same style of this one where we've got text on the left, image on the right, and for mobile and, and for tablet, I'm just gonna use that format for the whole page. And I will have alternating sections for desktop view. So you can see this one is gonna be good for all because that's the first one, right? Right, we want this alternating pattern on desktop. So this one's in the correct place. It does mean that we're gonna have to create a duplicate section for this one, so that on mobile and tablet, these two are swapped, right? So what that meant was I took this one, which is the one that I am showing on desktop, because I want this, these to be alternating from the first one, and made a copy of it, made it only viewable on mobile and tablet, and essentially what I did here, again, was I went to this column editor in the duplicated one and just moved the column. And that's it. Just make sure that when you are creating a duplicate of something that you are um, making sure that the viewability is adjusted appropriately. So you can see that these are identical sections save for they've been you know mirror swapped, right? These are just available on these two devices. This one is just available on these two devices. And so now what that looks like when we go to our preview is when we get down this far on the page, you'll actually see the image, or sorry, the text and then the image, text and then the image, and so on. And so I repeated this for the whole page. So we've got our text, we've got our image, then we've got our text. 
and then we've got our image and we keep that going, right? And so you'll actually see that again, here's one, I don't need a duplicate because I have it in the format that I want it to be showing up in mobile. But the second one where I'm alternating on desktop, I'm creating a copy, flipping the two columns and then making the flipped one available on mobile and tablet and the other just on desktop. And I repeat that throughout. And of course, because it's a sales page, we're interspersing this with uh, a call to action. And this is gonna be just really the same on all devices regardless. And that's basically it. I mean, the way that you go about making your pages look great, as great on mobile as you do on your uh, smaller devices is to first use the preview, be mindful of how things are showing up. And then if you like the content that's in a section, keep it, but then play around with what it looks like to shrink the text size or to, um, you know, or to add an add opacity uh, behind the um, the text so that it becomes more visible if it's uh, if it's in a section that has an image in the background or you know swapping things out so that they flow better visually, et cetera. It takes just a little bit more time. It's a few more steps, but you wind up creating something that looks really professional, is really beautiful across all uh, different devices. Now, um, one thing that I do want to make sure that we make note of, uh, just as a best practice, generally speaking, the majority of the time, creating an image that has the text in it that you want is generally ill-advised. Uh, if it's going to be something like these, um, these little testimonials, these are images. These are instances where text can work okay, um, inside of an image, but in a background. So like where you see this image here for a background, this is not going to be a good idea because it's generally not going to work well on all devices. In some cases, you may have a photo that works really well on the wider devices like the desktop and the laptop, uh, but that doesn't really look quite right on mobile. In which case, what you're going to want to do is in whatever the section is that you've created for mobile, you're going to go into the background and choose an alternate image for that. Maybe you use a gradient instead or something that's a bit less graphic or that shows up a little more effectively or a solid color, et cetera. So I'm interested to see if you guys have any questions or if anyone would like to uh, take a look at uh, the mobile design for your pages. Really interesting. Um, a sort of topic to explore. I know most of us don't come into this. I certainly didn't. I'm learning how to or knowing how to design. Uh, but it is something that um, even if you are hiring out and having other people do some of this stuff for you, I think that it's really important for a business in this day and age to have some degree of knowledge of how to utilize uh, this kind of thing so that you have that control of your business when you need it. Of course, for the actual design, maybe you want to contract that out like you can do with our team. But for small tweaks and maintenance, um, knowing how to do this simple stuff is really going to help you when you need it the most, um, you know, because you can't always when you realize something at 2 a.m. is not working the way that it needs to and you don't have somebody that you can call it to him and fix it for you on the fly. Uh, Nikki says, did hire you guys. Tiffany and Julie are amazing. They are amazing. You are correct. Uh, they're fantastic and they do beautiful, beautiful, smart work. So um, let me see. I don't know, Greg, was there anything else that you might want to add to like the whole, um, the idea of mobile and, and things that we might want to touch on there? Yeah, anything. I mean, just the, the general. Kind of what you already heard here. Um, I'll lay on and out. But can you hear me? Or uh, feel like there we go. Maybe... Okay. No, my my internet connection okay. was unstable, okay. so I didn't catch some of okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, I guess I don't know if anyone else heard it either. But so yeah, basically what I said. I mean, the general strategies that you've shared, I think, are are pretty much it, you know, duplicate content for mobile um, if you have a problem with it. Most of the sections are built, I think, to be responsive, uh, but sometimes there are some things where just, you know, it's just, well, the photo on the left 
versus the right thing. I mean, those are really nice, handy things to uh, to know about. And I mean, I've been building websites for a really long time and like there really is no avoiding the fidgeting part. Like you got to play with it in all the devices and like play with it and tweak it and whatever. Like, I don't know, maybe this whole GPT-4 thing will figure that out and make some magic thing happen. But at this point, it's like, you got to look at it, all these different devices and and uh, just make sure it looks good. You know, it doesn't have to be a major tweak. Sometimes you can get away with little little things, like you said, like hit enter at the bottom, or maybe you just change the size of an image or something like that. I mean, um, but yeah, if you want that perfection, you can always like duplicate it and make another copy for every device. Yeah. Yep, there you go. I, I think that is an important note. I probably should have let in with that. Uh, everything in our system is built to be responsive on all devices as a default. Um, what I'm sharing with you today are ways that you can really take that and uh, and make it your own. Awesome. Your win of the day. Awesome, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> If you really like something and you don't love how it's showing up on mobile, then um, then yeah, of course, um, you just make yourself a copy. That's kind of the thing too, right? Like we can create these uh, sort of templated sections and themselves, they are indeed mobile responsive, but it's the designs that we bring to those sections that sometimes we have to kind of tweak. So if there's an image that we just know we want to use, sometimes it's just not going to work on all backgrounds. And that's just the nature of, um, of viewability on devices. So um Awesome. All right. Well, I guess Nikki, let's uh, let's bring you out and let's chat about what you are looking for some help or feedback with today. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good. You? I'm doing really good on a road trip. <laughs> nice. So, uh, like I was mentioning, I did hire you guys to build out my website and got a lot of it finished. Um, so um, I believe a lot of what you were offering was to kind of look over things. I don't know if it's from a marketing perspective, a flow perspective or what, but whatever you guys can offer. Um, just starting off, um, coming from an in-person business to online in coaching and health and wellness. Um, so right now I am doing a lot on Facebook. I would like to use YouTube, but uh, I actually found working with this that using the Neo videos is actually really awesome. And I really like the aspect of keeping my clientele in mind too. Um, so yeah, whatever you guys can look at and offer. <laughs> okay, yeah, fantastic. Well, if, uh, if you worked with Tiffany on your design, I think we can all be very confident that what you have is gorgeous. And uh, look, look how true that is. <laughs> she does a really, really great job. <laughs> All right. So, um, so this is, this is fantastic. I love it. Let's see. So we've got coaching and we can go learn more. So let's go see what that's about. Fantastic. It's congruent throughout. I love this. This is fantastic. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look at that. I like thinking. What's that? Yeah, and then I, I added that little video there. I added mm -hmm. that little video there because I felt like there was too many words on the page. And so I felt like connection is one of my values. And I felt like somebody needed to connect with me when they're on their page. So I added that video to kind of describe well, what is it. Yes. And also because this is... I mean, you're, this this is a high ticket uh, sales page. I believe myself personally, right. if if you are allowing the page to do any amount of significant heavy lifting, if you are doing anything other than than closing the call and taking payment on the call, then you should absolutely have a video on a sales page. So that's I think that's really smart. And Vimeo is where well. Historically, Vimeo is, is where you would uh, have kept that. You could certainly have that in your AttractWell account now. You don't have to have that in Vimeo now. Um, this is great. It looks good. We've got VIP. Fantastic. And of course, when we go to purchase, we could pick. All right. Great. Oh, my God. This is fantastic. I love it. And we got your story down at the bottom. Client testimonials. No, this is no notes. That looks fantastic. 
super good. Yep. Still really, yep. This is excellent. Tell me about what you're doing for, um, for your lead generation. How are you working to get people to find you? I think that is something that's still a work in progress. I have a Facebook group. And um, if you notice there on the left, I have the 21 day challenge. Mm -hmm. So I ran that um, last month and I got um, three people in. And then from there, I got one person to buy the group coaching. So it's awkward at this point to have a group coaching with one person. Uh -huh. So I'm kind of um, trying to really settle in on what my next step is bring more people so I don't okay. know if I should run the 21 day challenge again um or do something I feel like that's a little heavy maybe something that's more like a one day workshop that has just similar content mm -hmm. yeah so I, I think that's a it's a really good idea to have really both and what I would actually encourage you to do is to maybe consider setting up your 21 day challenge uh, maybe once you're done running it with the person that's in it now, uh, set it up as something that's evergreen that somebody could get into at any point in time. Uh, and then they could have their sort of own self-paced journey through those 21 days whenever they get started. And that puts less stress on you to try to fill it to some certain degree. Um, and it creates a great deal of flexibility in how you use that content to serve your clients. And it's, it's scalable from start, right? So it's something that would have, a, it would be a great experience for one person. None of that awkward, where is everybody? Um, and then of course it becomes something that you, you don't just have to promote when you can be live all the time. You can actually have it be something that somebody could sign up today and get the same experience as somebody who signs up uh, in 17 days from now, they'll have their own 21 day journey. So that's, that's an idea for that. And I think it's a good way to look at it when you're getting started. Um, and then where the workshops are concerned, um, I, I don't, I don't see it as an either or, but a both. Uh, I, I think that that is a great way to get some people in. Uh, I think that a, a one-off thing is going to be an easier commitment than somebody committing to three weeks with you. So, um, so yeah, that's um, definitely things that feel smaller, more bite-sized. Don't be afraid to offer, you know, $97 calls and promote them widely and they get lots of people on them. And, you know, you, it's, it's a nice big surge of income for you. But then those people have had an experience with you that they can now use in their decision making to make, a, make those bigger commitments to things like a 21-day challenge or a high-ticket program. Right. These are great. All right, let's see what else. Oh, fantastic. Oh, this is great. I love it. So um, so yeah, no, I I I think um I think the website is great. Uh I think that uh, obviously Tiffany knows what she's doing, has done a very good job. Um we're okay, here we go. We're schedule a speaking inquiry. This is where we can go over. Cool. Oh, oh, one thing that you should know, um, you can actually, uh, in your Acuity, I believe this is Acuity, um, you can actually get an embed code from Acuity and create a page inside of your website um, so that they don't actually leave onebodywellness.org. They actually just go to another page on onebodywellness.org, they schedule their appointment, and they actually never leave your site, which is good for you okay. on a number of 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 small levels. It doesn't seem like a huge deal, but generally speaking, uh, for the authority on your site long-term for like search authority, SEO, things like that. Um, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be better for you. The longer people spend time on your site and don't leave it. So that would be a minor thing uh, that I would definitely encourage you to take advantage of is embedding that, um, on your site. So I am curious about one thing because one, um, I have not yet put on here. I have a uh a postnatal depletion program. And then I will also be doing um, workshops on brain health. But I'm not okay. sure if I should create independent phases and really like clogging up that top um, menu with all of these choices. So how should I plan all of these different things that I'm offering? They're different, but yet it has to do with your overall health. And so it kind of all goes together. So these are different programs? Okay. And will they, will they be sort of evergreen things? Yes. 
Okay. So I would um, potentially, uh, you know, if these are programs, um, you know, I, I would maybe have a page that just has a collection of those things, like a work with me, um, <clears throat> where they might, um, and this is something that could actually encompass uh, several of the things that you have in your, um, in your menu right now. You could have a work with me page that kind of serves as a directory where you can say, you know, private coaching, um, workshops and keynotes, courses and programs, right? And then those go off to their respective pages where there are lists of the things that you're currently doing or things that are being offered. If they're evergreen, that's how I would set it up. If it was something that was more um, of a date-based thing, then you could certainly use the events feature in Attract Well uh, to promote um, that kind of thing as well. So if it was like a, a one-time workshop or if you're offering things on a quarterly basis, like you could use um, events to kind of keep a digest for everything that's coming up. Uh, but generally speaking, I, I would kind of go with a sort of directory mindset with this, where you would say, um, work with me. And then under work with me, here are the different types of coaching I offer, right? So that's that's one sort of um, mode that you offer is coaching. Another is workshops and keynotes, and then another is programs. And so those would go off to their respective pages where people can learn more about those things. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Well, great job and great job to Tiffany. <laughs> this looks really nice and uh, I'm really excited for you. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. All right. Do we have any other questions or is there anything that you guys, do you have a site that you want to look at and kind of see how we can make it look better in mobile? We've definitely got a few minutes to work on that together today, if anyone would like to, or if you have questions about anything else, uh, we certainly have a space here to work together on this call. Um, you can raise your hand or um, pop into the chat or the Q&A and let us know, and we can work on whatever it is that you would like to work on here together. Let's see, Peggy says, would you give me your ideas on my funnel? Sure, Peggy, we can talk about that. Let me find, are, are you able to, to speak? I can bring you out to chat if so. Okay, awesome. Hello. Hi. Thanks for uh, for taking my, hi, how are you both? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, so I I was uh was on the call yesterday about the uh the with the uh the funnels and um there was just wasn't enough time for uh for me I had I had a client but in any case um yeah so I had created a funnel two years ago um and um I just I I recreated that in Attractwell but watching uh, listening to how you um and gave us guidance to create one it's it, i don't know it's just it needs work okay so um how, how is best to do this um should i um can you see it in my account i probably could but what if we what if we maybe talk through it uh and you can tell me what it is that you're offering and sort of what happens like what are um what's the sort of sequence we're looking at Okay, so I do sort of two things. Um, I, uh, I I counsel people for weight loss, and also I counsel um, people to reverse type two diabetes because when you lose the weight, most of the time you lose the diabetes. So, um, but I'm trying to make attract well my uh, uh, reversing diabetes or erasing diabetes is my is the um, is the program that I have. Okay, so. Um, so people come to my site and I, um, and there is on the front page, they're able to um, opt in to get my five, five tips for, for quick weight, quick and permanent weight loss, right? So then they, um, they come to a, um, uh, a page where they can leave their, their name and a, an email address and um, and cell number, and then up on the screen comes just that little page, that confirmation page, that um, check your email, um, and the link is in the email, and mm -hmm. I send them an email about how um, how I came to be able to reverse type two diabetes and how this um, this PDF of five tips 
will help them to do that to, to start mm -hmm. um, so that comes right away then the next day so in the email i do say watch your email tomorrow because i'm going to be sending you an email about with some recipes so the next day they get another, e another email from me. I, I talk about the recipes and I talk about beans and um, why they're significant in reversing type two diabetes. And then I end with saying, um, and watch your email tomorrow. I'll be sending you some information about when to eat because it can be just as important as what you're eating. Mm -hmm. So they get the third and final email from me and, and that has a link to uh, the downloadable about uh, intermittent fasting. And then sort of like, that's where I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I haven't created anything to follow. Ah, okay. So, so they are just sort of like left in my, in my, um, uh, my contacts uh -huh. and I, I need to develop something, um, uh, that's going to sort of foster them. Yes. And I, I think I need to develop an authority page because my little confirmation that uh, you did it, you'll get my 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 um, five easy tips. The first one um, uh, is not, it's not an authority page. And as I was mm -hmm. going through your um, your funnel challenge, th that's a, one piece that's missing. Right. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. I love this. All right. So as you're saying this. I kind of mocked what up what you've got so far, right? And okay. it sounds like, all right, so we've got our, this is a page. The blue guys are pages. Um, the green, these are campaigns. This is an automation and I'm not done with drawing this out. So just real quick. Um, what happens is first we go from, um, we're going from our five tips. We're being offered five tips. And when we take advantage of it, we're going to get this campaign sequence. Uh, we're also going to get this confirmation page, which I agreed, this should 100% be an authority right. page. Now, this authority page, what I would probably offer here is a, think of it almost like if you've ever opted in for a free thing, and then you got offered like a webinar, right? Um, what I would do is mm -hmm. have a video on, so you're offering a video on how I reversed uh, type two diabetes, right? Uh, and then this I would actually- have a testimonial. Oh, cool, okay. So I, I would- I have actually like... a testimonial on that. That's fantastic. What I'm recommending here it, 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 above it, you would want to include a testimonial for sure. Like those are things we want to use throughout, throughout this. But what I'm okay. basically saying is if somebody came and they got, you're, you're a baker, and you sell cakes, right? This is where they came to just get a bite. They're like, I wanna try a bite of that. On this page, we're saying, how about a whole slice? This is the whole cake over here. And I, I understand I'm talking about diabetes and baked goods. <laughs> so this is a bite, this is a taste. <laughs> this is a taste, this is a slice. We're trying to get them over here to the whole cake, right? So. What you want to offer here is something that's just a bigger bite than what this is, and it needs to be related, right? So the way that I talk about this in the client funnel challenge is we go from, here's a thing, and obviously this doesn't work in the same way for everyone. If you are a business coach and you sell high ticket, 100%, this is what you should do. You go from whatever the free thing is to, hey, I can help you solve that problem and you know, triple your ROA right now. Right. And that's, you get them on a call for that. You sell them on the call. And that is, you take them straight over to the program from the call. Right. Um, in the case of wellness, generally there's a little bit longer of, of a sales stretch there because people don't really see ROI with wellness as easily as they obviously should. Um, but it does take a little bit more lifting. So what I recommend that you do is on this authority page, you offer a more in-depth workshop of sorts where you're kind of talking about intermittent fasting, let's say, uh, you're talking about, you know, just th three ways that you can reverse type two diabetes. So here's my workshop on how you can reverse type two diabetes. Now, when somebody lands on this authority page and they click the button on this page right here and they say, yes, I wanna know how to reverse type two diabetes. The automation is going to stop sending this campaign. 
Okay. Now this campaign is eventually, if somebody never actually takes advantage of this when they sign up, they're eventually going to be offered this intermittent fasting download, right? Which is going to trigger an automation because they're still engaged. They're wanting to learn more where you have that opportunity to maybe offer that workshop to them again. Right. But that's later uh -huh. on in the journey with somebody that wasn't paying attention, but you want to make sure the first the first thing that you want to do with your funnel is provide the shortest path to a sale as possible, and then to provide a means by which people who aren't that ready can gradually get ready, you know, get used to hearing from you and eventually be ready to buy. And so what happens here is after this automation applies, they click the button on this page and they say, yes, I want that. This page is the, um, this is going to be, we're going to call it workshop, but it's a sales page. And this is where they, there, there's the video on how to reverse type two, et cetera, right? And then sales program. And of course, when they heard, they, they click on this page, they can actually join your program, right? The quickest path yeah. is to get them. I opted in. They're like, whoa, yeah, you could show me how to do that. They click it. They go over here. They watch it. They get sold this. Right. And obviously, you know, nine times out of 10, that's not necessarily how it's going to go down. But, you know, if it's only nine times out of 10 and eventually you have tons of traffic, that's a really quick, fast path to lots of sales uh, relative to the volume of leads you're getting. Right. So we want that path to be there. So what's going to happen is and I'm going to move all of this stuff down a bit because um, this is you would have maybe an additional campaign here uh, that's going to go out. And this this is actually going to be a. Um, uh, a workshop link, uh, this is going, and then these are going to be sales sequence, right? Uh, this is a sales sequence. I can't type today, et cetera. Right. So this is, um, your sales sequence is what follows here. And all of these are pointing people to actually come and purchase, right? right? Whether it's on a sales page or the vault checkout page. Now, the, the only reason why people are getting this sales sequence here is because they said, yes, I want to learn about how to reverse type two diabetes because somebody that wants to like lose weight right now might not necessarily be interested in, um, you know, maybe they, maybe the diabetes piece isn't something that they're addressing yet, you know, whatever that might be, wow. but we've created that path. Right. So now you've got this sequence, right? So here's my quick tips to permanent weight loss in these recipes. You could also say, Hey, by the way, don't, don't forget you know, there's, there's a workshop here. And when they click it, it could be this same automation, right? And all of these, you can have a link to this automation where if they click it, this campaign stops, they get sent the workshop. Now they're in the sales funnel, right? And then maybe later you offer them, you know, here's an intermittent fasting one. And maybe there's some additional, you know, um, there's an additional campaign that follows here. Uh, and, right. you know, and again, you could, at some point in here, you're going back, you're offering this automation or they can click, watch the workshop and then move toward the sales, you know, move through the sales process. Does that make sense? It does. And just, I have two questions. So this yeah. workshop that is, is hopefully going to convert them to a customer. Um, what do you, what, what would you recommend that be? Of course, I don't want to give away all my secrets, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm just taking a few things, like you said, three things that I do to help them to reverse diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So essentially what you're going to be doing is sort of following the webinar formula here where, you know, webinars that sell, uh, there's lots of great free training out there uh, on this. There's certainly people who are experts on this, who charge for their training, but the gist is this, um, you want to bring people in, obviously tell them what you're going to be teaching them. You're going to tell them why they should listen to you, why you're not just somebody who's talking, but you, you know what you're talking about throughout you're going to sprinkle some testimonials and then you get into you know you, you do obviously tell them what they came for right you share that information but you, you're not giving the whole thing the reason why you're presenting this in the way that you are is not only to give them value but to expose the gaps right because there's a solid chance that they're watching youtube videos they're reading blog posts they've read books they've tried this they've tried that you know the reason why they haven't succeeded Right. And and so you're able to kind of show that, you know, hey, here's a thing that we need to do. And you know what? You may have tried this before and maybe it didn't work for you. 
And, uh, and then of course, at the end, you actually show them how they can finally see the results that they want. And this is where you get to actually say, you know, in my program or working with me, you're actually able to, and this is where you close the gap, where you say, so you expose the gap when you're actually sharing the information and you close the gap at the end where you say, the reason why things didn't work out before is because of these things that you were missing and you have everything that you need here and here's what our journey will look like and let's get started, right? So it's um that's basically the logical flow that you follow there is you, you make the promise, you introduce yourself, you share what they came for, but making sure to really show how, despite having that information, it doesn't get you the result that you want. And then showing how working with you actually does get the result that they want. Got it. Got it. And and I think, thank you. And I think that um, you alluded to this before, but um, so high ticket and few customers or low ticket and lots of customers. Like I, I struggle with asking people for thousands of dollars when it comes to me so easily. And um, yeah, so. Well, right. they're, they're, they're both good. And I believe they're both necessary. Um, and I think it really depends on, on your preference. It depends on your, um, on, on the, your audience and the audience that you ultimately want to serve. I think that there's also a way to look at this where, um, you are creating products or offerings that are easier to get into, easy to follow that are sort of stepping stones right? In the direction of the, the higher level offers, you're kind of creating the client you want in that mm -hmm. way, if that makes sense. So when they arrive, they're at step two on the journey. And typically people who invest in high ticket are closer to step four or five. So what are the sort of, um, you know, stones in the water that you can place there for them to hop onto that move them closer? So um, in a way, it's almost like, it's like taking it's a similar to the analogy that I shared with you uh, with, again, it's just it's terrible analogy to apply where we're talking about like type two diabetes, but the baker uh, where you have, you know, here's my breadcrumb trail that leads you to the freebie. Um, the freebie is, is just a sample, right? Um, they could purchase for a low ticket price, a slice of that cake, right? And they could, maybe you have things that you offer that are they multiple slices, um, or somebody who's ready to commit can buy the whole thing. They know they're going to have a party. They're going to buy the whole thing. So yeah, it's it's hard to give you a definitive answer because it's not one that's really better than the other. Um, are, are you just, are you, are you starting out? Are you fairly new with what you're doing? I've been, I mean, I've been working um, in a doctor's office, one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling for six or seven years. But I do, I did put, um, I did uh, um, make a, an online course that I never, I never really launched. It needs a little brushing up now. It's been a couple of years, but, um, but yeah, so I have the online course and I'm, I would like to offer it with a little bit of, um, of uh, office hours or whatnot. Um, and then also I just full one-on-one -on -one if that is the best way to to go I'm just like so my thoughts are so um wishy-washy that I don't know mm. where to go where to start so so then maybe what you give a shot um depending again well I, I guess let, let me ask so I don't give you another it depends answer how are people finding you and how are you putting yourself out there so I'd like to write start a blog sort of a, a, a question and answer. I would love it if people said to me, oh, you know, what is the best food to eat or what is the best exercise to do? And I can just take that and write, you know, write whatever 500 words about that. That's my blog. Mm -hmm. um, keep them engaged and keep them reading. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess that's, the I, you know, social media. Yes, I have a, a, a group page. I have um, a race to diabetes page. I have my own page cross coaching page. So I, I post on that several times a week engagement, not very good, but I think that that's maybe par for the course. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, I don't know, do a lot of people, a lot of other people get lots of engagement. I, I don't know either. Yeah. Engagement's relative and it's not always a, a very good uh, indicator of the health of a business. It's actually 
often it's it's wildly different. <laughs> so um, you can you can have a really really active social media and and be making very few sales. So um, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. It's really more it's it's quality over quantity. So I what I would do uh, number one, uh, and I know we're we're kind of shifting here uh, in terms of 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 the subject of matter of what we're talking about here and what I'm advising you on. But you you mentioned like I would like for people to ask me questions and I'll blog about it. Start by asking yourself those questions and blogging about it. Think about what somebody would ask you or what you had maybe asked before, before you learned. And, and I would actually just start creating that content and start putting that content out there because what's going to get you, and it's again, it's not about volume, but what's going to get you the engagement you want is you showing up authoritatively as somebody who doesn't just have something to sell, but someone who has something to say that people want to listen to. And so the more of that you have out there, the better sort of structural support you have underneath your brand uh, for you to be able to easily sell things in a funnel like the one that we're talking about. But I will say this, um, because what you're doing isn't, um, uh, it's it's not super energetically sensitive, you know, so it's not like, um, I think when in, in, the, um, in the workshop call we had for the launch challenge yesterday, uh, was talking with Dee about um, her not offering a call right after an opt-in because she's working with people on a lot more sort of sensitive emotional subjects. Where you're talking about weight loss and fitness and things like this, that's not the same kind of sensitivity. I would actually recommend that you consider offering a call uh, because you are earlier on in, in doing all of this, you'll have more of an opportunity to kind of get to know the people and to be there, be present there, not just relying on technology and hoping it works, but actually being present there uh, to, to make the close, to make the sale. And then the language that you start developing on those calls is going to be the most effective thing that you put onto a sales page that would convert on your behalf. So um, I, I would I would really uh, consider making, um, offering a call with you as a second step and to, instead of like for now, maybe instead of having a workshop um, that doesn't exist yet, have a call with you be the thing that you're pointing to. So in this, um, in this example here that I shared, this is um, book a call with me, right? And when they click, you know, to when, when they fill out the form or whatever, um, you know, the automation applies, and of course, they're going to hop on. This would be where they book with you. Your calendar booking would be on this page instead. And then in all of these cases, the automation that you're you're connecting here is somebody wants to um, to book a call with you. That's gonna. Um, Thank you. I, yeah, I, th I think that that's going to be more helpful at this stage. Um, and then, of course, the goal should certainly be to have something like that, like a workshop that can do some selling for you, but. Uh, nothing automated is going to do as well as you doing it yourself first, because whatever you automate needs to be something that you've had some success with um, in real life. Does that make Thank sense? Thank yes, it does. It makes a okay. lot of sense. And, and it Perfect. gives me it gives me a good um, system or a good uh, framework to follow. Thank Perfect. you. Very much. Yeah, of course. Happy to help. Thanks Thank for coming you. out. All right. Thank you guys. If you want access to the launch challenge, uh, definitely make sure that you go over into your AttractWell account and uh, and go under, let me, I'll actually go show you guys here real quick. If you have not done so already, um, let me show you real quick. If you have not, you need to. Uh, there's so much great stuff in there that you can be using to inform your journey. Uh, and that is the call from yesterday that she was talking about. So if you go under my account settings, Scroll on down here until you see the launch challenge. Click this, get started, click sign up now. It's free for you as an AttractWell member. And then of course you will on an ongoing basis be able to find that in the AttractWell members area. It's attractwell.com slash members. And you can get all of those call recordings and all of the curriculum and templates and all that kind of great stuff. It's a blueprint for all areas of your business. So uh, thank you guys for sticking around. We appreciate you so much and are inspired by you every week. We'll see you back again next time. Take care.